It seems like these announcements are becoming more and more frequent, doesn't it? Another automaker has announced their switch to the North American charging standard. Welcome back to the Autospec podcast. I'm Francie, and I'm joined by Max. Max, how has your day been so far? Thanks for hopping on. Yeah, happy to hop on, Francie. Always great when another automaker joins the Tesla Coalition uh, or NACS Coalition. My day's been going great so far. A lot of out of spec stuff, uh, getting some time outside. And yeah, how about yours, Francie? Love to hear it. Yeah, um, I've had some great time with the family lately with a lot of little ones, and that has been nice and refreshing and a great recharge. And speaking of the recharge, so right, we've got Toyota and Lexus that, have, have cor of course, together have announced that they are adopting the North American charging standard, like we said. So, Max, who is left? Who is left to fall to the North American charging standard announcements? Uh, well, we've got like three companies, two big ones and a startup. So we've got Volkswagen Group, still a prominent kind of holdout at the moment. At, the, at this point, right, the other German brands, uh, BMW and Mercedes are on board. Uh, we still have also Stellantis, which is the big auto group uh, that owns Dodge, Chrysler and Fiat and a lot of brands. And we have Lucid. Uh, makers of the Lucid Air and the upcoming Gravity SUV. Uh, so those are really the only holdouts at the moment. Wow. So just a few left. And then, of course, we saw today's news or yesterday's news, uh, the recent news from ChargePoint as well, where we're seeing more uh, industry players, not just automakers, and their plans for the North American charging standard. And that's interesting. If you haven't heard that podcast, Kyle jumped on uh, with a the chief revenue officer, uh, Michael Hughes from ChargePoint, and definitely go over and listen to it. It's interesting to hear their plan. And so yeah, let's look at this press release from Toyota. So they will they say that Toyota and Lexus customers will have access to more than 12,000 Tesla superchargers in North America, which I think is an interesting point that we haven't really touched on on the podcast yet, but that there is a, a number of the stations that automakers, you know, customers that aren't Tesla will have access to. So I want to talk about that in a minute, but also they will be incorporating, they said, certain uh, that knacks into certain BEVs starting in 2025. This is including the three-row SUV being made in Kentucky, which I did have another podcast about this just the other week when I talked about Toyota's recent announcement with their partnership with LG Energy that is all about a battery supply agreement in the U.S., and that was on May 31st that Toyota announced that Toyota Kentucky will lead the first U.S. assembly BEV from Toyota, which is that three-row SUV. Um, so, Max, have you had the chance to drive either of the current Toyota or Lexus offerings that are on the market that are battery electric vehicles? Yeah, Francie, I've actually been in the Lexus RZ briefly because we had a tester unit out here in Colorado. And, uh, you know, it's nice. It's nicely put together. As an EV, you can kind of tell it's their first product. Uh, and that was kind of the way I can nicely put my time with it. Okay, yeah, definitely. And do you have a video on that that folks can check out, kind of get an idea? Yeah, Kyle did a great video on out-of-spec reviews talking about it, talking a little bit about his confusion about why Toyota and Lexus are at this stage in EVs when they make such great hybrids. Uh, it's still very early days. Of course, this news with the NACS shows they are in a, at least, you know, uh, making the right move here in this regard, which is exciting to see. Uh, I should mention, Francie, I did forget there's one other brand I mentioned, right? Volkswagen Stellantis Lucid, also Subaru, which is the right. uh, kind of, sister brand in electric right now of Toyota because the Subaru Solterra is the other vehicle that shares the platform with the BZ4X and the Lexus RZ that I drove. Subaru has not made an announcement yet. I'm sure they will soon. Yes. How could we forget Subaru? I love Subaru. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so just a, still just a, a little handful left compared to the others. And I'm assuming that we're all kind of assuming they're just figuring out exactly maybe their plans and even their just their plans for the announcement. So we'll see how quickly these roll in. Maybe there's going to be a one every day or some sort of next announcement every day. It's been day. close to that, it feels like. <laughs> 
It has. It really has been. And I want to talk about how the press release from Toyota goes on to say that additionally, customers owning or leasing applicable Toyota and Lexus vehicles equipped with the CCS system will be offered access to an adapter to enable NAX charging starting in 2025 as well. So we're seeing a plan for not only building in the native port, but also offering those adapters as well. So um, I would do. I want to go back to that point that I mentioned before, Max. That, like I said, we haven't really do, in, dove into much before dove into. So the specification that folks will only get access to a certain number of Tesla superchargers. Is it which chargers do we think this is going to be? Is it going to be based on the technology of the charger? Is it kind of to make sure that some of the network is still just Tesla? What do you think about that? How will that be decided? Yeah, it seems to be a technological feasibility thing and less so of a Tesla like, keeping some of the goods for themselves issue, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so the 12,000 figure they're talking about is this been the same figure that all the other automakers have announced. And as far as my understanding goes, that's basically the V3 Tesla supercharging sites uh, and newer, like we're seeing the V4 dispensers being put in the U.S., meaning basically uh, a generation of Tesla uh, charge supercharging equipment that's uh, ready to basically communicate uh, with the NACS protocol because NACS is sort of integrated with CCS at some level, the communication level for the nerd. So that means that that's what enables uh, this all to happen. So the V2 Tesla supercharging sites, some of those older sites, uh, are among basically the 12,000 uh, that can't. I'm sure Tesla has plans to upgrade those sites over time, but at the moment they're giving this 12,000 figure because that's those are the amount of sites they expect to actually be available. I think it'll open up broadly in the future, uh, but it's where we are now. Yeah, thanks for diving into that details. I think it's important to differentiate uh, and it also makes me wonder how folks are going to basically get the information of where they're going to be able to charge when now there's a whole different part of the network that was once unavailable to non-Tesla drivers that is available now. So I know that there is probably going to be some sort of data sharing or software integration between Tesla and you know all of their charger location data. Maybe it's some just static data that's locations, but maybe it's also dynamic data of the availability and uh, other things that can change like time. I mean, I don't know if they do time of use, but other things that other automakers would then take into their app and get those points so that they can provide that to their customers, because I do know that it is typically a goal of automakers to keep their customers within their ecosystem. So that's using yeah. their own app. So like the Toyota app. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how that goes about as well, because Toyota does mention in the press release that their app that within their app, the customers already have access to an extensive charging network, over 84,000 charging ports ports in North America, including level two and DC fast chargers. And then of course, NAX will only bring more charging options with an emphasis on that DC fast charging. So have you seen many efforts in terms of the software backend and how automakers will be able to meld the two of the new offerings of the charging network with NAX? Uh, well, we haven't seen anything concrete yet because, right, we still have yet to see the actual rollout of uh, NACS and non-Tesla vehicles. Uh, but I would say, like, the announcement, I think it was a couple weeks ago now that Hyundai made, specifically said that there was going to be auto charge or functionality and, of course, finding the chargers through their Blue Link app. So I'm assuming it will work similarly for Toyota's ecosystem. I haven't, I haven't had much experience with their app, but I think it's going to be uh, Toyota wanting users to discover chargers, check their status, and pay for them through their system. Uh, that seems to be what they want to do. I don't think Toyota or any of these automakers want the customers to be interfacing through the Tesla app to do this. And so it's all gonna be through their infrastructure. But it's a great point you bring up, Francie. It's very possible Toyota has to update some parts of their backend to actually make this happen. Even though there's integrated support already, I don't know how deep it is. Uh, and I will tell you, Francie, uh, with the RZ and the Toyota BZ4X, their existing electric vehicles, um, they don't seem to be designed for 
road trips. If you just look at the fact that they're very limited from a capability of DC fast charging, they're very conservative in terms of like, there's a limit of how many kilowatt hours you can put into them in a 24 hour period at a DC fast charger. And when you go beyond that, the car punishes you and just says you can no longer charge. So I'm assuming that would not change with NACS. That's just going to continue to be an issue. So it's like great for mm. people who use the DC fast chargers, but the existing vehicles with the adapters, they're not great chargers in the first place. And I have no indication with this news as a spec that'll change. Hmm. Interesting point, Max. I'd love to know if we have any drivers that have experienced that because I feel like I would be frustrated if I couldn't charge as much as I wanted to charge, yeah. even if perhaps it wasn't in my best interest. I mean, in terms of the health of the EV, but then again, I would wish that I could have an EV that could handle, you know. And other EVs okay. have figured it out. It very much seems to me, Francie, that Toyota and Lexus have designed these initial products to be second vehicles and not primary vehicles. So it's mm -hmm. good to see them supporting the customers and offering the adapter as the other automakers have. But I think, Francie, the big excitement is going to be towards products like their upcoming three-row SUV uh, and their more kind of uh, hopefully fleshed out electric uh, battery EV options. That's redundant. But, you know, might there be EV options in the, in the near future that hopefully are more compelling and more kind of usable on a daily basis for folks who are road tripping? Totally. I totally agree. So I, you know, okay, another announcement from another automaker. Uh, we had an announcement from a charging charge point operator and then charge point, and then we will see whoever comes next. It is again, super interesting to see how, you know, when I first started working in this industry, it was all CCS and we really didn't necessarily see this coming quite like this. I mean, maybe other people did, but we didn't really know how it was going to unfold or at what pace. And to watch this happen live has really been interesting. So thanks everyone for watching along with us, for tuning into the Out of Spec podcast. Again, we're trying to bring you this information and our thoughts, as well as interesting interviews with folks who are really involved in the space to you as quickly as possible. So if you're enjoying, let us know, of course. And Max, any other thoughts on this news? Uh, no, I think that covers it pretty well, Francie. It's what we know at the moment. And uh, yeah, people should stay tuned, though, because I'm sure there will be more to come, like the automakers we mentioned who haven't announced. Uh, it'll be a big deal. So, yeah. It will. Yeah, we'll see who, who comes next. Until next time on the Out of Spec podcast, thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Have a wonderful day.